The Prime Minister has already faced backlash for his proposed smoking ban from Brits and politicians alike. Now, Jeremy Clarkson has launched a scathing attack on Labour leader and Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer, branding him a full-on communist and warning that his policies could lead to the banning of meat in the future. The outspoken TV personality took aim at Starmer's approach to governance, particularly criticising his stance on smoking and private enterprise. Sir Keir Starmer confirmed he is looking at banning smoking from outdoor spaces such as pub gardens recently, with a potential smoking ban extended to all outdoor public places. This would make it illegal to smoke outside at a restaurant or even in the smoking area of a nightclub. Asked about the reports, Starmer said, My starting point on this is to remind everybody that over 80,000 people lose their lives every year because of smoking. That is a preventable death. It's a huge burden on the NHS. And of course, it is a burden on the taxpayer. So yes, we are going to take decisions in this space. More details will be revealed. But this is a preventable series of deaths and we've got to take action to reduce the burden on the NHS and the taxpayer. In a recent column, Clarkson expressed his disdain for Starmer's proposal to ban smoking, which he derided as a Stalinist decree. He argued that such a ban reflects a broader authoritarian streak in Starmer's leadership, one that disregards individual choice and freedom. So Starmer doesn't like smoking so he's going to ban it, Clarkson wrote before sarcastically adding, and then, to make this Stalinist decree sound reasonable, he says the illnesses smoking causes cost the NHS a huge amount of money every year. Clarkson went on to mock Starmer's economic policies, questioning the feasibility of his plans to increase public spending and fund green energy projects. He suggested that Starmer's approach would drive wealthy individuals out of the country, ultimately harming the economy rather than helping it. If he does that, most of the rich will bugger off. So, instead of getting 45% of their earnings, he'll get nothing, Clarkson remarked. The former Top Gear host also accused Starmer of harboring an anti-private enterprise sentiment, likening him to a modern-day version of Harold Wilson, whom Clarkson labelled as Woke Wilson and a full-on communist. He argued that under Starmer's leadership, the state would take control of key industries and assets, leading to inefficiencies and poor management. Just fine, what's your message to the new government? Do you think they get the kind of rural economy at all? No, I don't think any of them set foot outside Kentish Town for the last 35 years. No, no, they're a hopeless bunch. So um, would you invite Keir to your pub, Keir Starmer, Prime Minister? No, he's, he, uh, he's banned. He's, <laughs> actually, he's the first person to be banned. He's actually on a board in the, in the hall. He's banned. Why? Um, what have you got against him? Uh, hello? <laughs> I thought you were running a news operation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He hasn't done much to endear himself to me yet. Well, we'll have a look at farming. It all might turn around, you never know. Henry Bolton OBE has issued a call for serious questions to be asked about the future of the Notting Hill Carnival, following the confirmation of the deaths of two individuals who were stabbed while attending the event. Earlier, it was confirmed that a mother and a chef who worked under Gordon Ramsay both passed away as a result of being attacked while they were attending the festival. Her daughter, who was three years old at the time, along with other members of her family and friends, were present on Sunday when Cher Maximen, who was 32 years old, was stabbed in the groin during the daytime hours after she attempted to intervene in a fight. At approximately 11.22pm on Monday, the body of Musi Imnetu, a chef, was discovered outside of the Dr. Power restaurant in Queensway. He was found unconscious and had sustained a head injury. The Metropolitan Police Department announced on Saturday that both individuals had passed away as a result of their injuries. During an interview with GB News, Bolton demanded that an adult conversation be held about the future of the festival in light of the recent spree of criminal activity. It is imperative that a conversation that is serious, mature and honest be held regarding the funfair, he stated. It has been challenging to maintain law and order for a considerable amount of time. When it comes to the police being able to provide security for the general public while they go about their business, one of the fundamental principles that must be adhered to is for the police to acknowledge the causes of risks to public safety, for the purpose of having a conversation about it that is completely open and honest. If you do not, you will never be able to design solutions that are appropriate for it. The discussion of two-tiered policing is something that I feel compelled to mention. Whoever is responsible for crimes involving knives, car thefts, or anything else, is irrelevant to me. If it is done in a criminal manner, then it is indeed criminal behaviour. It is imperative that you experience the full force of the law if you are found to be guilty of that, he added. This is not the way that a weekend getaway with the family should be. On this topic, we need to have a conversation. Benjamin Butterworth, a political commentator, joined the conversation and argued that the amount of criminal activity that occurs at the festival is not out of proportion when taking into consideration the number of people who attend the event. It is a terrible tragedy.
it has been reported that the daughter of the deceased woman witnessed her mother being stabbed. According to him, that is a truly tragic event. These questions have been asked before. You are required to take into consideration the magnitude of it. When compared to the size of London, some of the stabbings and drug dealings that have occurred in the city are not completely, completely out of proportion. Notting Hill Carnival is something I can honestly say I've never attended. My experience at the Pride Festival in Manchester has shown me that it is extremely crowded. I have never witnessed anything worse than a fight. Other news includes the fact that the director of Net Zero Watch, Andrew Montford, has criticised the energy plans proposed by Keir Starmer and Ed Miliband, stating that they are risky. In a scathing rant, he attacked the Labour pair by calling them insane. He did this while he was speaking in an interview. In his words, I think it's fair to say that Keir Starmer's plans for Net Zero are wild and dangerous. We have arrived at a crucial juncture in the efforts to achieve net zero and the relocation. Over the course of the past two decades, there has been a consistent and linear rise in prices. Price increases are proportional to the amount of renewable energy that is added to the grid. We are beginning to experience periods in which we are producing more electricity than we actually require, and this is happening as more capacity is added to the grid. In essence, the amount of electricity that you receive from each new wind turbine that you install is lower but the cost remains the same. From this point forward, the prices are going to skyrocket at an exponential rate. It is going to become quite hazardous in the near future. In particular, Ed Miliband and Keir Starmer are devoted followers of this particular topic. Ed Miliband, the current Energy Secretary, has insisted that the Labour government will take the initiative to play a leading role in the movement towards net zero. In an interview with The Guardian in July, he stated that the United Kingdom needed to make a course correction and was not on the right path. For the reason that we believe it to be the appropriate course of action at this time, we have adopted the manifesto position that we have. Having said that, it is also appropriate that we fill the void of leadership regarding this matter. We are now in possession of a government that is openly supporting those who are working to delay climate change. As a nation and as a global community, we need to make a course correction. In addition, this election presents us with the chance to alter our course of action. In the early stages of their tenure, the Labour Party has proposed an ambitious energy policy which will be implemented by a new state-owned company in the near future. What do you think about Jeremy Clarkson's comments? Do you believe the UK government is failing to listen to its people? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.